Good morning, dear Stitchers. Let me introduce myself. I am Judy Whitman of JBW Designs. I am the sole designer here, uh, and I've been doing this for a long time. I want to welcome you. If you are returning to watch the video, I so appreciate your comments and your loyalty to watching. It's just so much fun every week to read what you have to say. And then if you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you because I hope you'll become a subscriber and, and be interested in watching what, what I have to say and what I have to share with you. So this morning I was thinking before I started, I wish you could see the shenanigans that I go through just to get everything set up. I try to move my computer to a different spot in my uh, office every day, every time I record. But, but this you'll get kind of a chuckle out of. So before I started today, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. So first I had to go and grab a cookie. And my um, children and grandchildren will get a kick out of that because I don't go anywhere without snacks. And then I realized that we're, my feet were kind of chilly because it's cold out today. So I had to grab slippers. So now I'm all set. Hopefully no stomach growling uh, to start the video. So I want to um, tell you a little bit about my plans for today. I have several topics that I want to cover. I want to answer questions from the last video, which were really interesting. I want to talk about some of the antique samplers and add to what I've told you in the past. I'd like to talk about um, Christmas designs because, oh my gosh, our, this seems like our month is just flying by. and. I don't know about you, but I'm getting nervous about getting everything done in time, as usual. And then I want to touch a little bit on uh, designing your own sampler, which I kind of briefly touched on last week. I'm just going to add a few thoughts to that topic. Um, I have some giveaways at the end of the um, video, so stay tuned and welcome. So first of all, let's uh, address some of the questions that came up. And one of them, uh, the first one I want to talk about is someone asked, do you have a favorite red? And I thought that was such a good question because I do use red, of course, in a lot of the antique samplers and in a lot of my designs. So I do. I pulled out um, three DMC colors and three of the hand dyed fibers. So um, first of all, one of my favorites is Ribbon Red from Classic Color Works. And Schoolhouse Red from The Gentle Art. It's kind of hard to see in this light. They're all very, very, very similar. That's a little darker than Ribbon Red. And then I also like Gentle Art's Cherry Wine. And that has quite a, quite a nice variegation in it. And then the other three that I want to tell you about that I've been using a lot are DMC 150. And I use that in the Olive Rolly sampler, which you'll be seeing in a few minutes. Um, I also like uh, 326, which is uh, has a little more of a pink cast to it. Um, and then a darker one that I use quite a bit is 498. And someone just asked me about my alphabet in the round design, the Christmas version, and I had to look up to see what red I used, and 498 was the red that I used. So that's um, kind of addressing favorite reds. I'd love to hear if you have some also. Um, I tend to work in the over fibers for the most part and DMC. So then the second question I want to talk to you about is someone asked, did I have any alphabet designs? And I kind of had to chuckle about that one because um, I have tons of alphabet designs. I went into my stock closet and just started pulling off the shelves all of the <clears throat> the first ones that I could locate that use the alphabet because I tend to do a lot of samplers with the alphabet as part of the design. So I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to show you the models, but I'll just uh, name a couple of titles. I probably have 10 or 12 here that use alphabets. And you may not have seen them before, so that might be fun. So alphabet cats and alphabet dogs. Those have been out for a while. So the whole alphabet is contained within the design. Um, alphabet pumpkin, we're kind of past fall, but 
you might think about that for next year. Let's see what else do I have in my pile here. Uh, here's another fall one, Alphabet Owls. And let's see what else is in. Ah, this is one. I've done a couple of um, alphabet designs, and I they are to kind of honor a country. So I did one that I called Alphabetique. And of course, that's uh, French. The word actually doesn't exist. I think I made that up, but it just sounded right for the design. And I used a number of different alphabets in that design. And there's a corresponding design for Britain, which is called Ode to Britain. And each one of these, the French and the British one, use um, symbols that are significant, of course, for the, that country. Uh, let's see, I also did an antique rooster sampler. And I'll show you the whole design. Uh, let's see, I might not have a big picture of it here. It was quite popular this fall. Another uh, floss tube person uh, had worked it and had mounted it in just a beautiful, beautiful finish. So that's not a very good picture, but that, you get kind of the idea of that one. That was a really fun one to do. And then I've done a number of floral alphabets um, where I take um, fonts from many, many different types of, of um, alphabets that are in my um, antique book collection. So this was one called Floral Alphabet, which was really fun to do. And I added other elements to that. See, I warned you, I do have a lot of them, don't I? And then this was Floral Alphabet 2, which probably isn't going to show up that well because it is, there's a glare on here, it is in, done in such pastel colors. Um, and I have seen both of those worked in other color combinations, which have been gorgeous. Um, so patriotic ABCs. Let's see. Oh, the rabbit alphabet. This has been very popular. Let's see. I think I have a big picture of this one. So this is what the booklet looks like. And this is what the design looks like as a whole piece. And I've seen that one stitched over one. Oh my gosh, it was just stunning. A rose motif sampler also uses the alphabet. All right, I'm not going to bore you too much longer with these. And then I have one more that I stumbled upon when I was looking, and that was a winter collection. And if you look at this little snowman right here, he also is made up of the alphabet. So I should have looked to see the name of my viewer who asked that question, but thank you because that inspired a search for all the alphabets that I can, could find. And I actually have more than that, but I don't want to bore you to death. So I want to move on now to um, the antique samplers. And it has been so much fun to hear the responses from some of you who actually live in Cornwall or live in the UK. Um, it's just been wonderful. So one of, I'm going to pull out the sampler. We've talked about, I'm going to call her sampler. It's the Monica Marshall sampler. I've got all my notes here. So I received a note because I asked a question last week and I, I'm going to pull out the sampler so you can see it again in case you haven't seen it before. It's been so much fun because we discovered that Tour Georgie, with the help of my viewers, was actually in Cornwall, England. And yes, each time I pronounce it, it sounds a little stranger than the time before. But so, whoops, excuse me, I've got everything set up here so I can reach it easily. So one of the questions I posed last time about Monica was that she um, passed away in the Jersey Channel Islands. And I admitted that I knew nothing about them. But wait till you hear this, because it was such a neat story. This was from Kathy Culverwell. And I'm so grateful to you, Kathy. So she said, hi, Judy. My sister-in-law lives in Jersey Channel Islands. Uh, my husband's family comes from Somerset, England. And in the 70s, his sister, husband, and children moved to Jersey. Jersey is a beautiful island, which I have visited many times over the past 30 years. It's a tax-free island, 
and this is the interesting part, where you have to apply to live there as they keep their population regulated by how many births there are per year. Of course, this is the current history of the island, and I don't know what the rules were from many years ago. So we know, I know from doing the research, that Monica was 86, and that is where she lived when she passed away. So I thought that was such an interesting story to the um, history that we're trying to gather here. And then I had another wonderful note from, and I have to pull out all my information here, from Rebecca. And she actually is uh, lives in Cornwall. She has a company called Hedgerow Stitchery. She also does videos, so I want you to check her out because she has been taking antique samplers and reproducing them, and she has them for sale as PDFs. So she sent me, let me find my file here, pictures um, that I had seen before but had not printed. And these are pictures of, I'm going to take this, do it one at a time, of Monica's maternal grandparents. And this is her maternal grandmother. Her name was Sarah Augusta Randolph. And Augusta, of course, is Monica's middle name. And she was quite young in this picture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me. Grab a quick drink here. I would say she was probably in her early 20s. And then she married, um, and this would have been Monica's maternal grandfather, Francis James Coleridge. He looks quite young. They're actually, as Rebecca said, a very handsome couple. And Sarah was born in 1819, and Francis was born in 1825. So one of the things that's been so interesting about researching Monica is that I was able to find on Ancestry a list of every place that she lived during her life. And so what I've been trying to do for instance, um, she lived in, I think I've mentioned this before, she lived in Hanover, Hanover Square in London. She lived in Somerset at Combe End Manor, and I've been trying to find a picture of that area because it's actually a seaside resort. That would have been in 1939. She, uh, Monica was born in 1891. Um, she also lived in Bristol, which I thought was interesting, in 46. Um, and then, of course, in the Jersey Islands. So she moved quite a bit during her life. But this is, has been such an interesting history of Monica. So we're going to move on to another antique sampler. Oh, one more note. The name Coleridge uh, that I told you about, her grandfather, is a very significant name because Samuel Coleridge was quite a well-known poet in uh, England, and that was her Great grand uncle. And so that was kind of interesting to uh, tie her to someone who was so famous. Um, incidentally, I also wrote to the owners of the manor who have turned it into a resort in Cornwall, but I have not heard back uh, with any added information. So the next one I want to talk about is another English sampler. And this little girl, I'm going to try to get this up to show you. This is a little heavier is named Edith Sarah Isherwood. And you can see that she signed her sampler right here. Uh, this was worked on a fairly coarse linen in, I believe, a, a wool thread. And it was worked in 1884, which would not have been unusual to have that kind of fiber at that time. Um, and this is what I found out about Edith. She was born in 1873 in Yorkshire, England. Her mother's name was Sarah, and of course I um, mentioned, so that was her middle name. Her father's name was William. She was the oldest of seven children. And on her sampler, she actually, this is what, I, what really drew me to it and why I purchased it, she actually lists the Kilnhurst Boarding School. And that is where she probably stitched her sampler, which would not have been unusual because often in England, the children uh, went to 
Um, it could have been a day boarding school. She might not have lived there, probably didn't, but this is where she probably learned to stitch. Um, one of the fascinating things that I found out about Edith, in the census, at the uh, when she was 18 years old, she was listed as a dressmaker. And I just love that fact because um, we love the fact that she not only stitched the piece, but then she went on um, to do something with stitching in her background. And her sister, Eliza, was uh, listed as a draper's assistant. And I meant to look that up to see what that meant. I think she might have been an assistant, actually, to her sister. I also discovered that her father was a glass blower, and there was a Victoria Glassworks that was established in the city where they lived. Um, I also, in my hunt, excuse me for blocking the way here, I discovered uh, with Edith, I didn't find out a lot about her, but I found out some facts, that I was trying to find information on the uh, Killenhurst boarding school. And let me, I'm just going to fold this a little bit. So I actually found a picture uh, that was from 1900 in Swinton, Yorkshire, of the boarding school, uh, a class. And her youngest brother was born in 1885. And this class is of very, very young children. Um, what's amazing is how they're all dressed with their little collars and their suits, and the little girls have lace collars. So it's possible that her brother William was a student at this school. Um, did I find out anything else about her? Uh, one more thing about Edith. Um, she immigrated with her husband to Nova Scotia in 1912, and after that I have found no other information out about her. So um, that was my second antique sampler to show you. And incidentally, let me backtrack a little here. I um, am going to publish another set of these samplers that I'm showing to you. So in March of last year, I published a collection of antique red samplers, and I took five samplers that are, were in my collection here in my office that I had purchased over many years, and I reproduced them in this format. And that actually has proved, proven to be very popular. So I'm going to do another set of five samplers, and so Monica's sampler will be one of them, Edith's sampler will be another one, even though it's not uh, technically red. The pink kind of falls into that category. And then the next sampler I'm going to show you, actually the original was not in red, and we've talked about olive before, but um, I have stitched it in red because I love the layout of the sampler and the wording that she put on her piece. So let me grab this one. So this is, as we've talked about before, I hope this isn't too boring to you, is the Olive Rowley sampler, stitched in 1805. And she would have been, uh, let's see, uh, she was born in 1791. So she would have been 14 years old when she stitched her piece. Um, I mentioned last week that she was, the, uh, had not, she, she was one of nine children. I discovered when I went back to look at the information, she was actually a twin, and her twin sister was Deborah. And um, then I mentioned also her father was Moses, her mother was Patience, and I told you that I found uh, his last will and testament. So what I did is I took that last will and testament, let's see if I can find it, and I actually, it was very hard to read, so I took that, it's done in a beautiful script, and I actually typed it so that I could really study it. And in typing that, I discovered that her father had two brothers, and their names were Weeks and, let's see, what was the other one? Nathaniel. And they were executives of his will. Now, the interesting thing about this, I haven't found out a lot about Olive, but her father died um, about two weeks after she finished this sampler. That will was written two days before she passed away. Uh, I'm sorry, before he passed away. Um, and then the other thing I discovered about Olive and where she lived 
is that at that point in her life, that would have been 1805, uh, she lived in a town in New York called Hillsdale. And Hillsdale is in the southeast corner of New York State. Um, I can kind of show you on this picture here. So it, it's right down here. Hopefully I have my directions right. You never know. Um, and that I read a, a little bit about that. It was a very hilly area. The other thing that was interesting about it is that um, a turnpike um, was built from that from Massachusetts to the Hudson River, which was part of Hillsdale, and it was to bring produce to New York City. Now, what we haven't discovered, or I haven't discovered, is what Olive's father did for a living. Um, the colors in Olive's original sampler, as you can see, are very, very dark. There are only two shades. I'll show you the back because her work actually, even though there are loose threads, was quite neat. It was, and I've pulled the colors to match this and I will put those in the original sampler directions. Um, but I have decided to work it in red. And, oh, I know one more thing about the letters in this sampler I wanna tell you. So it's so interesting. And that's why sometimes when I read the wording, it, it's um, confusing because if you look at the word, let's see if I can get it up close enough. Let's see, let's look at the word this. The S actually looks like an F. And I went back and started researching antique samplers this past week, and I discovered that that is not unusual, that there are instances where the, the, the letter S is stitched like an F. So that was not uncommon at that time. So I'm gonna set this aside. This actually goes in a, in a frame, I have to reframe it. So I have restitched this in red. And um, I used 150. I stitched it on a 36 count using just one strand of floss. I had a devil of a time mounting this piece. Um, I should have let my framer do it. I was trying to save money and I thought, oh, I can uh, lace it and finish it, which I haven't finished lacing it. But her stitching is, um, is not even across the top. So there are instances where a letter goes above you know, the top margin. And so it was, and also some of the borders kind of fall off. So it was very challenging to mount. I'm not sure I've done the best job. So uh, let's see, do I have anything else to tell you about Olive? I think that's all that I have about Olive. So let's set her aside. And now I'm going to switch gears completely. And I want to talk to you a little bit about Christmas and Christmas designs. So let me set my files aside here. So I have many uh, Christmas designs in my collection. I actually probably my favorite season that I designed for. So I thought I will pull out models once again and show them to you because it might inspire your stitching. It might be too late. That's okay. I understand. But it's always fun to see them in person. So one of the things that I do every couple weeks is that I have a page on my Facebook um, page called Friends of JBW Designs. And I, um, people post pictures of things that they have stitched that I have designed in different colors, different thread counts. It's just fabulous. And then I do this contest. So I usually put up two or three models. Uh, I ask people to uh, vote on their favorites. It's so much fun because people are passionate about the uh, piece that they choose. Uh, last time we had a record 240 some people who voted. And so I thought I'll pull out those models and I'll pull out the books to show you those up close. So the three models that I posted in this last contest were all on wooden sleds. And these sleds are made by a company called Foxwood Crossings. And I'm trying to think, I think it's part of a shop down in Tennessee called Dixie Darlings. So if you were interested in getting the wood sleds, they actually come in several sizes. This design, which is sledding snowman, has been worked over two. I may have shown this before, I can't remember. And let's see, let me check on the fabric on that one. That was stitched on a vintage blue whisper. 
on a 28 count. And the sleds, when you order them, are actually brown. And I just spray paint them because I think they're prettier with a color on them. So sledding snowman. Uh, let's see. It looks like this. This is the book. And here is the, the model. They're fairly easy, actually, to mount. I just make a, a tracing of the top of the sled and use that as a template. And then, um, as I've explained before in the past, I use the comic board and then batting. And then I wrap that around the um, template. And I glue that to the back. And then you glue that to the top of the sled. And then I just make a little twisted cording for the edges. So that was one of the sled designs that appeared in the contest. Another one uh, came from the Little Green Sleds design booklet, which I will show to you here. It has three designs in it. Gingerbread House, a gingerbread boy, and the little stocking. These are also quick to stitch. You can see I painted that one a dark, dark green. And then the third sled in the contest came from another book. And this was um, called Little Red Sleds. And it too has uh, three designs in it. There's a little glare here. So it is uh, Joy, Noel, and then this little village. So I have a funny story to tell you about my friends page. So a couple weeks ago, I thought, oh, it's, I haven't done a contest in a while. I need to mount. I need to um, post something. And I just couldn't get on my page at all. And I couldn't figure out what in the heck I had done. So thankfully, I have a wonderful assistant, Dawn, who helps me with all things technical. And uh, she came one day to work, and she fixed it. <laughs> it turns out that somehow I had dropped myself out of my own group, which many people, when I uh, explained that on that page, thought was quite funny. <laughs> it is kind of funny. How in the heck did I do that? So um, let's talk about a couple of other things. And this actually falls in the alphabet category. So another design that I have is called French Country Stocking. And that, too, uses the whole alphabet in many, many Christmas motifs. There is a companion stocking to this that is, I think it's just called rain, uh, French Country Reindeer Stocking. Uh, it's worked in green. Of course, it could be worked in, in any color. But I, I pulled this one out so you could see it. It has a gorgeous fabric on the back. It's a beautiful twelve, so it just fits in perfectly with the design. And that booklet, let me lay this down, it looks like this. And let's see here. Ah, guess what I found if I open the booklet. Let me just fold it. Here is a picture of the same design worked in green. And let's see if I can find any other photos. Uh, I think that's it for, for pictures. So that's French country stocking. And instead of Noel, you could put your um, child's and child's name at the top in that space. So another one, actually, that's been out quite a while. I just called my printer today to have it reprinted. Um, some of these designs, even though they're older, people don't care. The, their themes that they're looking for. So this one is called Baby's First Christmas. And it too has um, three designs in it. It has the gingerbread boy, a rocking horse, and that little stocking that I showed you before. And so that, let me show you the models for those because these would be easy to stitch to. So here's one of the designs. It's finished with a ruched ribbon on the side. A pretty backing. Here's the little rocking horse. And again, instead of the wording, you could put a child's name and even a birth date on there. And then here's the third design with the little gingerbread boy. And in the background, it's probably hard for you to tell, but to make it look like snow, I stitched tiny, tiny little petite white beads. So that's another Christmas one to show you. And then I have two more. So um, ABCs and Christmas trees um, actually 
falls into that old alphabet category again. And this actually was stitched over one on a 28 count fabric. You could stitch it over two, of course. And that booklet looks like this. So my goal always when I do these videos is um, to introduce you to designs that you might not have seen before. And here is a picture of that design worked over two. So that was there was a whole series of these long alphabet designs that were really fun to do. So ABCs and Christmas trees is that one. And then I have one more set of designs to show you. And this one is actually interesting because, um, and you may have seen it before, it may be new to you. This is called Christmas Village. And there are four booklets in this set of designs. And each booklet has three little buildings in it. So you can see there's a farm and a church and a little house. Uh, let's see what's in two. There's a gingerbread house, a chalet, and then another little uh, Austrian looking house. In number three, there's a schoolhouse and a mill and just a little, a little yellow house. <clears throat> and then the fourth one has a Victorian house and um, a covered bridge, I had to think a minute, and then another little house decorated for Christmas. So these designs I can show you as individual designs. So you wouldn't have to stitch, of course, all 12. You could just pick out your very favorites and stitch those. So I'll show you quickly. Uh, here's the little mill, and each one of them usually has a little charm with it. Uh, here's the gingerbread house. That was a little gingerbread boy. Here was the chalet with a reindeer. Here is our covered bridge with a little Amish carriage and a horse. Here is uh, the church with a star. Here is the Victorian house with a little Christmas tree. And here is a just a, a little tiny yellow house with another tree. Another one. Uh, the schoolhouse, the old-fashioned schoolhouse. And you know what? It had a bell up here. I see that the bell is missing, so I'll have to add that. And then here's a little barn. So that's some of the 12. Now, what I thought I would show you and I wanted to talk to you about is I stitch these as one whole design. And I, I'll show you, you can get the whole layout of this by just emailing me. And incidentally, that's the best way to reach me. Judy at JBW Designs is really um, how I'm able to answer questions or respond to your <clears throat> requests for items. So I stitched it as a whole design. And then I um, designed the overall layout, which shows where to put each building, and then the wording and the little trees that go around the buildings. And I'm going to show you that whole model in a minute, but I want to talk to you about what happened to it. And I have heard other floss tubers, um, actually I think Brenda, maybe with Brenda and the Serial Stitcher, mentioned that she had done something a while ago and the color green that she used had faded terribly. And that is exactly what happened with this design. So I'll show you what the overall design looks like. What happened is this lettering all through here, which says I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year, which is one of my favorite um, phrases. This lettering, which used to be a lovely kind of an olivey green, I believe it was poblano pepper or scuppernong, um, has faded terribly. It's almost faded so much you can't even read it. And it's faded to kind of 
it's not a beautiful color right now. So the only way for me to fix this, which I could do, would be to take it apart and restitch um, the lettering on here. So it's kind of a shame, um, I think, that that happened. But um, and my models don't stand, aren't in a window. They're not on, on display where the sun is hitting them. I just think it seemed to happen naturally. So I thought you'd be interested in that. Uh, little fact and maybe be careful with the colors you choose for your lettering. I also have another design and maybe I'll show you that next time. I don't have too many videos to do before Christmas here. Is I have another one called Twas the Night which is the same concept. It's four books. There are three designs in each book and then I, if you wanted to you could stitch them separately or you could uh, use this a PDF file which gives you the border and the placement for each of the designs. So if you want any of those um, PDFs, they're free, just, just write. So um, one of the other topics I wanted to bring up today is one that actually generated more interest than I thought. Um, I talked to you about possibly designing your own sampler, your own family sampler. So I'm going to pull out um, some books. I have some more books that I looked through. And I had some more suggestions. And this, this is going to be just a brief discussion here. But years ago, I had a very good friend here in Kalamazoo who owned an antique sampler. And <clears throat> it looked just like this, except I changed the, the lighting is so bad. I changed the wording, of course, to just include my own family. Now, this is pretty typical of a family record sampler where you have a border, you have an alphabet, maybe several alphabets, and then um, in this sampler, uh, the stitcher listed the names of her grandfather, her grandmother on both sides, and then the mother and the father and the children. So that is something that you could think. This actually is no longer in print. It was published a long, long time ago. But I thought after look, finding it, I remembered that I had done it, that this might give you an idea for the layout of the sampler that you're trying to put together. And my advice would be to try to keep it simple, as simple as you can. So one of the things that, you, that I also studied was I have this wonderful book which I mentioned earlier called Samplers by Stephen and Carol Huber, who are collectors. And this um, actually talks about samplers and their value and antique samplers and why, why they're, they have that value. But I felt like this book is also a marvelous resource if you're designing your own sampler so that you could find a layout for yourself. And I thought of some other things for you. Um, I think I mentioned before, think about adding buildings, trees, alphabet, animals, borders, and also a quotation or a verse, which is very, very common in antique samplers. And you can also, of course, add, as often as done, wrought by or stitched by with a name and dates. And I would um, encourage you to try your local library. My library actually has quite an uh, impressive collection of older uh, needlework books, so that might be an idea for you. The other thing, if you want to be fancy with your piece and add some decorative stitches, this is kind of the Bible of decorative stitches, and it's called A Proper Stitch by Darlene Osteen. And um, I actually, it was interesting, when I was stitching Olive's sampler, I originally thought that she used an eyelet stitch in her capital letters. And I went back and put the antique sampler under the magnifying glass, and she actually had stitched, instead of an eyelet, she actually had stitched four, just four cross stitches. So that's how I'll um, chart it. Um, this is another book that I have in my collection called Stitch Together which is Early American Samplers, and that was an exhibition catalog, and often those are good resources. And this is another one that I found in my collection that's called Family Record, and that's exactly what it discuss, is, discusses, is um, uh, fam family samplers that have been done, 
just as I've described with a border and then a listing of the names. So I hope that gives you some more ideas uh, for those who are really interested in uh, tackling something like that. So let's see, I, this is probably my longest video. Um, what have I been working on? I have stitched several new models. I've got uh, several more to stitch. I've charted two new designs. And I have been so busy with orders, and I can't complain because business has been just wonderful. So I thank you for that and for the shops who have been so uh, good about ordering lately. So um, I have a couple more things to talk to you about, and that is the prizes. So last time I did a video, I had five books to get away, <laughs> not get away, give away, and three of them actually have not been... Um, called for yet. So I'm hoping that these three people who I'm going to name um, come forward because I had Phyllis and she was going to win the Be Joyful design. Loretta was also going to win uh, the Christmas pear tree. And uh, and this was, I think, seam stitchy. I just wrote to her. I wrote to all the people to remind them that they'd won something. But as I say, um, I haven't heard back from them. So I'd love to give these away. I'm saving them, and hopefully uh, I will be able to do that soon. So what am I going to give away this week? I have five prizes to give away. So let's choose some of the ones that I have been right, one, two, three, four, talking about in my video. And I will make notes so I have everything organized. Incidentally, I want to acknowledge several Floss Tube people who have been so good about talking, showing my designs, stitching my designs, and I just can't thank you enough. So Annabella's is one, uh, the Vintage Stitcher, Artie, the Proper Stitcher, Annie, Brenda and the Serial Stitcher just mentioned several designs last week, and Criss Cross Stitch. So I'm so grateful. And if you see others that mention please let me know so I can uh, recognize them. So I um, want you to know that I do have a website, and it's jbwdesigns.com. I do have a shop on that website, so you can order uh, some of the older designs. I do not put my newer designs in the shop because I want to save those for my um, independently owned needlework shops to order. It's very important to them. So let's do our prizes for this week. So my first prize today is going to be the set of four village designs. And that's going to go, let me write a note here, to, to a viewer whose name is Algo, A-L-G-O, Max Stitcher. And her actual name is Marsha. So Marsha, contact me through email. Then the next one is going to be Robin Selby 1, and she would get the Sledding Snowman. And then the next design is going to be for Ernie Follenfont, and uh, she would get ABCs and Christmas trees. So hopefully you ladies are watching. A Little Red Sleds is going to go to Connie, and I love her uh, name here. It's Count Twice, Stitch Once which is a good lesson for all of us. And then the last one is going to be little green sleds, and that's going to Diane Lyman. So um, congratulations, all of you, and please contact me, and I will send those right out as soon as I hear from you. Um, my last comments have to do with Thanksgiving and the next week, because in America, of course, um, next uh, Thursday is Thanksgiving Day, um, I am hosting our whole family here, so it will be crazy busy. Everybody is so good about helping, not only with the preparation, but the uh, cleanup. So, and we always have such fun. Uh, we usually have a puzzle going in another room. So I hope that you too have uh, friends or family to take time to celebrate all the blessings that we have in our lives. And I certainly feel very blessed. I'm blessed to have you in my life. Um, it's just made a world of difference, and I just um, am so appreciative. So if you want to win something, you have to subscribe and uh, like the, the video and um, be over 18 and not use the word free gift in your comment. So thank you once again. 
I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks and send more comments and questions. I just love them. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.